so we can continue with the session in the next hour. So as usual, uh, our uh, sessions uh, will be recorded and will be shared uh, on uh, Microsoft Learn uh, Learning Rooms, um, social medias, and also on the YouTube channel. So if you want to watch it again, or if you are not in this session or watch it later, you missed the session, you can watch it later. So uh, what is Microsoft Learn? So as you uh, know about Microsoft Learn or heard of Microsoft Learn, it is the best and richest place that you can ever find content and training material, documentation about Microsoft services and technologies that Microsoft produces and shares with the market. I recommend always in every session, including this session, make Microsoft Learn your homepage if you're in this path together uh, with uh, all of us together. So every time you can see every update, especially about Microsoft Azure, other cloud services or training paths, also offers uh, free trainings, uh, free practice tests, that you can uh, follow together with the modules from Microsoft Learn. And Microsoft Learn Learning Rooms are also part of the tech community within learning uh, within Microsoft Learn that together with learners, we all connect and we share the knowledge, we ask questions, we deliver sessions together with professionals that uh, to, to be able to help as much as we can to the learner to have progress on their learning paths. Uh, you can follow the links uh, here on the slide uh, for Microsoft Learn community and Microsoft Learn itself. Uh, yeah, to the learning rooms. Uh, thanks, Said, uh, for going back. <laughs> and uh, our last slide uh, would be um, a short code of conduct about the session. As usual, we have in all our uh, official Microsoft Learn learning room sessions. So being aware of each other, being friendly and patient, respectful while asking questions or uh, talking to each other and opening to all questions and viewpoints and understanding the differences. Uh, thanks again for joining, and I'm going to hand over the stage to Hannes. Hannes, thank you for uh, joining and sharing your time with us. OK, thank you, Hamid. So hello and welcome to my session about centralized network management in Microsoft Asia. Microsoft Asia have a lot of different tools to centralize, manage network stuff or network and connectivity uh, options, and today I want to share one option with you, but before we start, I'd like to introduce myself to you. So my name is Hannes or Johannes Lagler Grüner. I'm a lead cloud architect in uh, Austria. I'm working with public cloud since the beginning. So Microsoft is starting with the public cloud is Microsoft Asia. And this is also my starting point to begin to learn Microsoft Asia. The reason for that is I'm working a five years, up to five years for Microsoft. I'm also um, um, here, so I'm uh, yeah, Mike, uh, working for Microsoft, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm since three years, so it's the third time I'm a Microsoft Asia MVP. You can find me on YouTube, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, also on X. I have my separate or my private blog called Cloud Blocker, and I have my uh, YouTube repositories where you can find scripts or uh, ARM templates or solutions, whatever. So if you want, please join, uh, please, please follow me or please contact me after the session. If you have some questions, you can uh, contact me on LinkedIn and write me the, uh, the other the question what you have. You can see I have a lot of uh, different certification. I'm also a multi-cloud architect, so I have a little bit um, of knowledge in GCP and AWS as well, but my main focus is clearly Microsoft Asia. Okay, today we're talking about centralized network management. And first of all, we are talking about why centralized uh, network management. Why should I have a centralized network management inside the cloud? And the next one is what? What can we do or what services are available in Microsoft Asia? And at the end, how can we implement this? And how can we achieve uh, the configuration? How can we achieve a, a centralized network management? The, set, the session itself is, um, a technical session, so we have here uh, uh, some slides about the service itself, and then I will hand over to a live session where you can also see the possibilities, what you have with the service and what you can do. Okay, so first of all, the why. Why should we use or why is it so important to have a centralized network management in Asia? 
So let's think about your environment. What, what happens at the beginning? At the beginning, you're, you're starting in Microsoft Azure, you're starting to provision your virtual network. For example, you want to uh, deploy a, a VM and you have your virtual network. All the time you have maybe a second virtual network, a third virtual network, and you want to connect it each together, that you want to connect it together over VNet peering. Over the time you have maybe also a connection to on-premise, so you have an hub and spoke architecture. You want to connect this, you want to connect this to on-premise or, or a VPN gateway. You have your network security groups in place, uh, pointed to the, to the separate subnets, or you're using an Azure firewall or a third party firewall, whatever. All the time, you get a VM, you want to connect it together. You have more and more virtual networks. So when we think about enterprise scale framework, you have more landing zone, you have more virtual networks, and the complexity increase really dramatically. So that's the reason why it's really a good idea to have a centralized network management, because that complexity increases really, really fast. Over the time, you have more and more configuration, you have more and more to do in, inside Microsoft Asia over the uh, with the network stuff. And when you don't have a centralized configuration, the operational overhead is really, really huge. And at the end, if something happens, errors could be really cost intensive. So to troubleshoot, to find the error, to find why the, the routing is not working perfectly. So that's the reason why, it why it's really, really good to have a centralized network management in place. So as mentioned before, Microsoft have different possibilities to centralize manage, uh, to centralize manage network configurations. And one option what you have is Azure Virtual Network Manager. Azure Virtual Network Manager is a new service. It's available. It's in GA since um, half a year. And this could be the answer for centralized network management. The question is, what is Azure Network Manager? The answer is here, it's a new managed service. It's fully managed by Microsoft. It's high scalable, high available, and it's a service which is redundancy. Which, which uh, includes redundancy and also replic replicate the configuration across the globe. You can manage your network configuration and you can also manage your network or uh, security admin rules. It's really interesting. So this is the second point that you can do. So first of all, we are going to the network management stuff. And we are talking about manage virtual network. What possibilities do you have with Azure Virtual Network Manager? So the benefits here, when you use Azure Virtual Network Manager, you have a low latency and a high bandwidth between resources in different virtual networks using Azure Virtual Network Manager. So this is nothing new. This is the same when you are using VNet peerings. The benefits what you get with Azure Network Manager, you have the, cent you have the configuration centralized uh, and you can remove the configuration from your VNet peering, you can add new virtual networks to the VNet peering centralized. And you can see what virtual networks are together, uh, connected together and what are the, the possible, uh, and also the, the um, uh, you get the best bandwidth for the best uh, benefits from the VNet peering. The rollout, when you want to update your network configuration, you can specify when you want to roll out. You can do this over infrastructure as code if you want. You can also plan, okay, I want to include my network environment from another region tomorrow or at the evening, whatever you prefer, and you can do this over infrastructure as code or manually over the portal. It doesn't require VNet peering sync when you change the IP address space. It's really important to know. So normally you have your VNet changes when you change your VNet uh, the address space, you have to synchronize the peering. You don't have to do this over the VNet peering. So this is also a really, really interesting thing here. So how can we implement? How can we implement the network configuration inside Microsoft Virtual Network Manager? You have to define your scope for your Virtual Network Manager. This is the first step what you have to do when you deploy the Network Manager. You no worries, you can change the scope later on, but I will show this in a few minutes in the live demo. Then you can go ahead and uh, create your network groups, create your configuration and deploy your configuration. 
So first of all, the scope. What you can you define? Normally, when you start with Virtual Network Manager, you define the scope based on the subscription level, or you can go one step higher to the management group level, or if you want, you can also implement a tenant level, so you can implement another tenant in your configuration if it's required. You can then change the scope later on. It's not, not a problem. So you're starting small, you're starting with one subscription and uh, go up uh, to the management level uh, level to the management level if you want later on. Okay, then you go ahead and define your network group. Network groups is a network group is a global container that includes a set of virtual networks. So you can implement networks or you can add networks, virtual networks to the uh, container or to the network group dynamically or static. That's the really, really uh, important thing here, dynamic or static. We will, uh, I will mention that I will show this in a few minutes. Uh, and the other thing that you have, you can define your environments. You can say, okay, I have my dev environments, my productive environment, my prod environments. And in some situations, you can also combine, uh, you can also overlap the configuration. So you can say, okay, this is my productive environment, but my productive environment also have some virtual networks from my test environment included. So this is also possible. From the assignment option, you have two options here. You have the static option. The static means, OK, it's really you have a network group and say, OK, this virtual network assign please to this network group. And this is a static um, uh, connections and a static boundary between virtual networks and your networking group. This network group from, uh, from type static, you also have the ability to use a cross tenant level. So you can say you have my main tenant. And I have maybe a developer tenant or a test tenant, a separate tenant, and also my subscriptions. You can join or you can add the separate tenant into your mutual network configuration and join or add networks from another tenant, from another subscription, from another tenant to your networking group if it's required. It's only possible with network groups based on static type at the moment. When we go ahead to dynamic groups, Dynamics groups um, in, in real time, in, in their reality, it's a policy based joining, it's a policy based group. So when you create a dynamic network group in the back end, you're creating an Asian network, an Asian policy, and the Asian policy have different options. You can uh, define here based on the tag level, based on the uh, subscription level, uh, resource group level to add virtual networks to this group dynamically. You have the ability to define your policies with standard rules. So uh, normally you can use the network or resource policy contributor. This people or people uh, member of this rule are eligible to create dynamic groups, or you can also bring it down to a least privilege permission and least privilege means you have to have you have to add a separate role or custom role and use exactly these three policy types or these role types um, for this rule and then you have a least privilege concept for your users which are uh, um, which are able to create dynamics groups then you define your configuration um, once more, a virtual network can be a part of two connected groups, so uh, we can have an overlapping, and then you define your topology, your network topology, what, what you want to roll out in your environment. From the topology, we have three different options. The first option is the traditional option, a hub and spoke environment, so you have your virtual networks, you have the virtual networks are connected to the hub environment, and from the hub environment, the connection is to on-premise, if you have a firewall, also the connection between the spokes are routed over your firewall, for example. You can also implement a mesh environment, so a direct connection be between the virtual networks is available, or at the end, you can also implement a hub and spoke architecture to connect to on-premise with a direct connectivity between your virtual networks together. Okay, and then you have able to deploy a configuration that from the deployment perspective you have to define where the configuration should be deployed so you can define your regions which are in the scope from the configuration 
And keep in mind the implementation could be um, a few seconds, not minutes. So this is the older presentation. At the moment is, I guess, in five seconds, the configuration is in place and you can use the new configuration or you can test everything. And we have one limitation. It's really funny. So if you have a customer with more than 50,000 Azure subscriptions, you can apply Azure Virtual Networks only at the subscription, the resource group scope. So I don't have a customer with more than 15,000 subscriptions. So if you have, then please keep in mind, this is a limitation of Asia Virtual Network Manager. Okay, enough from the theory. Let's go to a technical or let's go to a live session. But we, what we are doing is, first of all, I want to give you an overview about the network manager, also from my environment, what I've prepared. Then I want to deploy a network configuration. I want to show you how fast the configuration, how fast the implementation is. And at the end, I want to show you where you can validate the configuration, where you can see at the Asia portal that the network configuration is available, the network configuration was successfully deployed. So before we go to the live session, I want to give you an overview about my uh, environment, my, about my prepared environment. In this case, I have a small environment, so based on an enterprise scale framework, it's not really the, 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 the full environment. So I have here my tenant root group, I have a management groups, I have three subs subscriptions, one for the management environment, the other one for my application environment or for my landing zones, and the third is for my connectivity environment where my and maybe in the future, also my virtual my VPN gateway is uh, connected. Um, you can see here I have a bastion host to show you the connectivity at the end between the virtual networks. I also have implemented a net gateway because you know 2025 uh, we need a net gateway, for example, to connect to uh, to connect virtual machines. Uh, to have an outbound connectivity from it, virtual machines to the internet. So one option what you can do here is a NAT gate where you can use a firewall. Then I have a virtual machine with a load balancer in front of the reason I will mention in a few, I will show you in a few minutes. And at the left side in my management group, I have my network manager service itself. What we are doing in the first step is, so nothing is connected. So I have uh, my three virtual, uh, virtual networks and nothing is connected, no VNet peering, nothing is available. The first step is I want to roll out an hub and spoke architecture. So this means I am able to connect over my bastion host to my VMs. At the moment, it's not possible because my bastion host is connected to my hub uh, virtual network and there's no connection between the spokes. Okay, then the first step I'm able to connect to one VM in West Europe, for example, but the connection, the direct connection between my West Europe and my North Europe VM is not possible because I'm using a hub and spoke architecture without a firewall in the hub. And what I want to do is I want to update my configuration with some full mesh architecture. Okay, so let's go ahead and I want to show you my environment. So here we are. We are now in my environment. You can see here I have four resource groups in different subscription. I have here my management subscription, my uh, application subscription, and my connectivity subscription. I also have here my VMs. My VMs are uh, based on North Europe and West Europe, so two different regions. I have here my load balance in front of my VM in North Europe. And when we go to the network manager, uh, the networks in West Europe, you can see here I have my spoke networks in uh, North Europe, West Europe. And I also have here in each region my NAT gateway in West Europe and North Europe. You can see here I have here my management subscription, uh, my connectivity subscription, and inside my connectivity subscription, I have my hub virtual network and also my um, bastion host or my bastion service with the public IP address. I don't have a VNet peering here in place, so you can see nothing is available. Uh, and the connection to the VMs 
it's not possible. So here you can see I'm trying to connect to the VM over the Bastion host and it's not available at the moment, not in, in West Europe and also not in North Europe. Okay, so let's go to the network manager. My network manager is placed here exactly in this resource group. And you can see here the Service Asia Network Manager. And I want to go inside the service and here you can see the overview. And first of all, what we can see on the right side is what kind of features are available. I have here two features activated. The first one is the connectivity and the second one is security admin. Security admin is a topic in the second uh, part of the uh, slide uh, and also in the second part of the presentation and the live thing. Here you can see the scope in my tenant and here is the possibility what you have to change the scope. Normally you are starting on the subscription level, for example, and you can go up to the management group level if you want. So in my case, I'm using here the management group level. So all subscription behind my management group, my root management group are in my scope. You can also change here the scope. If you want, you can define another scope or add a separate subscription. You can do this every time. Okay, and here you are able to um, implement as cross tenant scope. So if you have a separate tenant, a second tenant, for example, for dev environment or for test environment, you can add a separate tenant. You need the right permission to do this and you can add the management group or subscription from a separate tenant in your um, network manager scope. Okay, that's from the main configuration from the initial configuration. Then we go ahead and want to, I want to show you the network groups itself. So here you can see I have two network group. I have my, the first one is a static network group. And when we go inside the group, you can see here the group members. I have two group members. And here you can see the group members are from type or from kind um, manually. So here you have the ability to add your virtual networks based on your scope. So in this case, I can go here to add manually members and all virtual networks in your scope will be shown here. And you can say, okay, I want to add, for example, this network, click on add, and then the configuration or that network group is updated. The second option, what you have is a dynamic group. So when we go to the dynamic group section, you can see here inside the group members, it's a little bit different. So here you can see the source is pol AVNM dynamic 01. And this is exactly one policy. So this policy is assigned to my scope, what I prefer, and all my virtual networks based on this criteria, uh, based on this uh, policy criteria, will be added automatically when it's available. So when it's when it's changed and it's based on the, uh, the configuration inside the policy. How the policies looks like, it's really simple. You can see here on the left side, the policies. And when we go inside, you can see here my dynamic policy and number of members is three. Let's go ahead. And here you can see I have a policy based on a tag. So if the policy or if the, the VM, uh, the, the VM, I'm sorry, the, the virtual network, have a tag named AVNM and the value equals true, then it's uh, a member or it's a new member from the policy or it's a new member from the network group and will be automatically assigned. So this is the detailed path. So when we go ahead and create a new dynamic policy, we can go here or okay, we can click here on create. And here you can see what options do you have. You can use the advanced editor to uh, implement JSON-based, uh, your JSON-based configuration, or you can use here um, the selection. In my case, what I've done before is I'm using here a tag, and here you can define contains a key or does not contains a key or contains a key value pair. When you use this one here, you can do exactly this, A, B, and M, and the value equals true, for example. This is exactly that what I've done with my dynamic policy. Okay, so that are the two different types what you have, static policy or static uh, network group and dynamic network group. Then we go ahead 
and configure or define our configuration. In that case, I have here two network configuration. You can see here, I have one connect, uh, one network connection from type hub and spoke, and the second is from type mesh. So think about my presentation before, hub and spoke is the traditional way you have your hubs, you have uh, your spoke one or more, and all hubs are connected to the spoke, and the communication between the spokes is always routed over the hub, and normally in the normal configuration, when you don't have a firewall in place, the, uh, the routing is not possible from the spoke, from one spoke to another spoke, because the, the hub network don't know the, uh, the network, the other spoke network, and cannot route this. So it, there are different options available. You can use an NVA, you can use, I recommend this, an Asia firewall, it's not supported to use a VPN gateway from the technical perspective. It will be, it's, it's working, but it's not supported. Okay. And at the end, you have here your configuration. And what we are doing right now is we are roll out the configuration hub and spoke. So this is our first step. We click here, click on deploy and define our target regions. You can say here what kind of regions do you want to roll out or where do you want to roll out the configuration. In my case, I only have virtual networks in West Europe and North Europe. So I go here and say here Europe and select here the two regions. Click on next. Here you can see a new configuration will be added into the regions and click on deploy. It will take a few seconds so you can see the deployment process is starting. And when it's finished, uh, the site will be updated and it will take five to six seconds. And you can see, and you, uh, and uh, after that, I'm able to connect to my VM. So the deployment is now succeeded. Go back, click on reconnect. Hopefully it's working. It's a live environment. Yes, so here we are. We are right now connected to my VM. So the connection between the hub and the spoke is available. We are also able to connect to our second VM. This is the VM in North Europe. And you can see here, I have here the IP address 10.0.2.1. Ah, .4, I'm sorry, it's the gateway. Um, and I'm not able to ping the VM. So it's the reason is not that the firewall is enabled. The firewall is disabled at the moment. And normally uh, the ping should work. But in this case, it's not working because I don't have a um, full mesh or I don't have a firewall in my uh, hub environment. That's routing the configuration. Or that's routing the traffic from a spoke to the other spoke. OK. So where you can find the configuration, we can see here under the deployments, we can see here, okay, the configuration was succeeded. So the, the deployment was successful. And here you can see the status was succeeded. Where I can see the configuration on my virtual network level, for example. So it's really easy. Go back to the network. Here you can see I have here my virtual network environment in West Europe, for example. You have now two different options. You have the option, the first option, this is new. In the past, a few months ago, it's not, uh, you can, cannot see anything here. You have here the ability to go to the peerings. And here you can see ENM and the name what's available uh, from, from the connection for the VNet peering. You can see here the connection is uh, successful and so on. On the other side, you have here on the left side, the network manager, and here you are able to see what kind of configuration was deployed in my environment. And here you can see a hub and spoke, and this is exactly the configuration which is rolled out to my VMs, to my virtual networks. Okay, so this is where you can see the configuration. Let's go back to the environment, to my net virtual network manager, and update the configuration. We are going to my configuration, say, okay, I want to roll out the full mesh and my configuration, click on deploy. Here's the configuration selected, select the regions, North Europe, West Europe, 
It's the recommended region. Click on next. And now you can see the old configuration will be removed and the new configuration will be roll out. Click on deploy. It will take also a few seconds. And we are normally we are disconnected from the environment, from the uh, bastion connection. Seconds. Yes, the deployment was succeeded. Go back. Hopefully we are connecting back to the VM. Come on. Live demo, I love it. Yes, so now we have a full mesh architecture and you can see the VM from West Europe is able to uh, connect to the North Europe VM. From the configuration on the virtual network side, you can see here when I go back to my virtual network and go to the network manager and now you can see here when I click on refresh, the connection full mesh or the configuration AVNM con full mesh it's now available. Okay, so this is the first part from this. I have, I'm able to roll out my virtual network connection. I'm able to update my connection. So the most question the the the, the, the questions that I often get is what happens when I update my network configuration, my network groups in this case. So when I update here my network group, when I, say I want to, uh, when I update this dynamically, I have a new virtual network and the new virtual network will be added to my network group, what happens? Is this an automatic update or whatever? No, it's not automatically. So you have to update your configuration. You have to add a new region maybe, or you have to update your configuration manually. That's a, a manual process. You can do this over infrastructure as code, what you prefer, over CSED pipelines, but at the end, it's a manual step. Okay, so that's the first part what we have. The second one is Asia networking rules. So when we think about your network structure, normally you're always starting with security groups, network security groups, application security groups, and maybe you have a centralized firewall, but normally you have inside your virtual network to separate your subnets network groups. Network groups are always assigned to an network interface or to a subnet. And what happens when you don't assign a network security group to a subnet? It's not so nothing, nothing is where nothing happens. So uh, there's no limitation. So everything is open between your subnet. And maybe the network manager can help here because when we go to the comparison network security groups versus security admin rules, you can see here there are two or uh, three differences between network security group and the application security group. And the most important one is applied on. So normally when we talk about network security groups, once more, it's assigned to subnet and network interfaces and a network a security admin rule is always assigned to a virtual network. So you can start with two subnets inside of your virtual network and increase the subnet. Always on each subnet, the network security admin rules will be assigned automatically. It's from the priority higher than a network security group. So we always, uh, the routing uh, or the, 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 the process is always starting with the network security groups and then we'll go to the network security groups. We have three different options or three different action types, allow, deny, and always deny. Uh, always allow, I'm sorry. So what, what does the action types mean? So when we go to the workflow, when we go to the process, when a traffic is coming inside your virtual network, first of all, the traffic is coming and then security admin rules will be checked. So is there anything allowed? Is there anything blocked? So when we say allow, the traffic will uh, go over the security admin rules and go to the network security rules and 
then it's done, then uh, the connection is allowed or it's denied, whatever. When we say it's always allowed, the admin security rules say, okay, it's allowed and it doesn't matter what happened or what, what's inside the network uh, security rules, the connection is allowed. I will show this in a few seconds. And the third option, what you have, always deny or deny. When we say in the security admin rules, the connection is denied, it's denied. You can say, okay, security admin rules, for example, port 3389 RDP is allowed. When we say, okay, it's globally from a company disallowed, it is disallowed because you, it's the first time, the first thing what, uh, what will be checked is the admin security rules. Okay, what are the benefits from the security admin rules? From the operational perspective, you can um, minimize the operational overhead because you can define your centralized admin rules and you can say, okay, I have my departments, for example, and they should uh, configure their network security groups by their own and manage everything for the um, uh, application perspective. You can also, from the emergency benefit, quickly block high risk traffic, traffic centrally over all your subnets, over all your virtual networks. And you can also protect, uh, you have a protection benefit uh, when new resources are provisioned, so in this case, when a new subnet will be assigned or will be created inside a virtual network, the network security admin rules will be al always enforced on all subnets inside the virtual network. Okay, so this is the second use case. What I want to show you is we have now our full mesh environment, and you can see I have my virtual machine in North Europe in this case. I have in front of the VM and load balancer, and per default, everything was blocked. So I have a network security assigned, a default network security group, and in the default network security group, uh, we have blocked everything from outside the, uh, the internal network. And what we want to roll out is and configuration to allow HTTP traffic exactly to this VM from uh, the internet. So let's go ahead and have a look to the configuration. Okay, here we have a um, configuration. In this case, we have here a security admin rule configuration. When we go inside this configuration, you can see here, and this is, it's, nearly the same when you configure and firewall. You have uh, an Azure firewall, you have here your collection rules. And inside the collection rules, you can see here um, your rules inside uh, the connection rules. I have here exactly one rule in place and I want to change this one here to allow. So what you can see here is I have here the name, I have the priority, and priority in this case is one. You can use here the priority starting from one up to whatever you want. And when we think about network security groups, we always have to start with 100. In this case, we have an inbound direction, we have a protocol, we have a SOAS, so this is a five tuple ACL, what we can define. So let's go into the de details. You have here the same ability. You can use here the priority, the action, the direction, the pro uh, protocol, different protocol types. Here you can say the source type. In this case, this is any. And the destination type, in my case, it's a separate IP address. It's a specified IP address and the destination port. Or you can also choose a service tag. So the same like network security groups. You can see, okay, everything port 80 inside uh, into my virtual network is allowed. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy the configuration. It's the same step, the same process. We can go here to deploy and select here the security admin configuration. And in this case, I want to deploy this into my North Europe environment. Click on next, click on deploy. So it will take a few seconds. Meantime, I'm going back to my VM. And here you can see I have a VM. This is my VM in North Europe. 
on the VM is no public IP address assigned because it's not allowed on my subscription from my sub subscriptions. Uh, from my policy uh, configuration here, you can see I have a network interface and the network interface doesn't have a public IP address assigned. Well, let's take some time. Come on. <clears throat> Okay. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Here you can see I only have a private IP address, no public IP address assigned. <coughs> but I have here my local answer, and the local answer configuration have a public IP address assigned have a backend pool. In this case, it's one VM. This is exactly this VM. It has an, he an health probe and also a uh, load balancing rule with also uh, root port 80 TCP from external to the internal VM. We also have assigned a public IP address. In this public IP address, we have assigned a DNS name. And then we go to the DNS name. Try this one. It's not working. Why it's not working? Because I have a network security group assigned with it doesn't allow external traffic to the VM. So in this case, external traffic, so the first time, uh, the first thing that happens is the uh, security admin rule will be checked. In this case, security admin rule say, okay, port 80 is allowed. We can use port 80, but it go, uh, goes ahead and uh, will uh, the, the traffic will check the network security group and the network security group say, okay, it's not allowed to connect over port 80 to the VM. That's the reason why we go back to the network security crew, uh, to the virtual network manager, update the configuration, in this case, security admin rule, click here on collection rules, or you can also go to the rules, click here on edit, and here you have the ability to uh, define the action, in this case, allow, deny, and always allow. I'm using now the always allow section, but then always allow action in this case. Click on save. I'm updating now the rule. And now I have to update the configuration. So click here, click on deploy, select the region, in this case, North Europe, click on next. And here you can see the policy or the configuration in this region will be updated. It's not a new configuration, it's an updating process right now. Click on deploy. And hopefully in a few seconds, I'm able to connect to um, a VM over the Azure load balancer. And yeah, we will see this in a few seconds. Uh, but nevertheless, where you can see that the configuration was assigned to the VM. So this is not a, an, uh, in this case, it's not um, an specific, VNet assignment, it's also an, uh, in this case, an uh, VM assignment. So reload, yes, we are now able to connect to the VM. We are now able to connect over the load balancer to the VM. So when we go back to the VM, or when we go back, first of all, to the virtual network in North Europe, so we have here our North Europe virtual network, go to the network manager section, and here you can see in the security admin configuration, I've now rolled out this configuration, exactly this configuration to this virtual network. When I go to the VM, so here we are going now to the VM, go to the VM in North Europe, click on network settings, and here you are able to see there's one admin security rule assigned. So we are now able to, and so I'm sorry, so go here, effective rules, click on effective rules. And normally you can see here the two options what you have. You have the network security group option, and you can see, or can also see the security admin rule option what you have. So here we are, network security group, 
This is my configuration from the network security group. It's the default network security group configuration. And here you can see the configuration which is assigned to the VM from uh, Azure Virtual Network Manager. And here you can see it's allowed to use port 80 to exactly this destination. And this is, in my point, one of the most important feature here. You can assign security admin rules to a VNet and can centrally configure or centrally manage your baseline, your security baseline over your virtual networks, over your environment. And you can also dynamically add new virtual networks, also bring it into a CSED pipeline and update the configuration, what you want. Okay, so I'm in time, 43 minutes. Thank you, thank you for visiting my sessions. Thank you for uh, the art, maybe, there are some questions. I hope you have some questions. If not, please connect to my LinkedIn channel and ask what you want over uh, the Teams message. Amazing. Uh, thanks, Anas. That was an amazing session. We, Thank you. And personally, I learned a lot. <laughs> that was quite <laughs> great information. <laughs> I think for people that they are keen to start learning and uh, going for exam 700s, you shared a lot of good information. So <laughs> I really recommend people to watch this session again. <laughs> Thank it's, you. Yeah, yeah. it's very insightful. It was so it's, insightful. Especially for, for exam, as you mentioned, said it's. Uh, I, I just took AZ uh, 700 just earlier, like a week ago, and and the exact same things you mentioned with the the, the live uh, actions, Hannes. I mean, yeah. that was exactly most of the things related to the exams, and they said that this session was really helpful and is really helpful for people who are uh, thinking of taking the exam or like uh, working more on their network uh, uh, configurations or security wise also. So yeah, I would recommend uh, as well watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, is there uh, any questions? Uh... Yeah, any questions, we can also unmute uh, mics or any questions in the chat. If there is no, I have one question, which is a mm -hmm. kind of uh, fundamental question, and I think you can give a lot of information and good knowledge about that for the learners. Uh, so uh, if we back to that topic about uh, the architecture of the network, so mm -hmm. Uh, differences between hub and sparks and mesh network. So what is the best practice if we want to implement one of them? What is mm -hmm. the best way first when we want to design it and when we can use one of them? So mm -hmm. that's my question. So, so I always recommend to start with an hub and spoke architecture. The reason for that is it's really simple because you have normally when we think about the enterprise scale framework, the enterprise scale framework means you have three different management environments. So you have a management, you have your identity, and you have your um, management identity and connectivity environment. And you also have your landing zones, your application environment. And normally, uh, you will you will say, okay, I'm using a hub and spoke architecture and route everything over a centralized firewall. So I'm placing inside my hub, my centralized firewall and always handle the connection between the spokes over the centralized firewall. When you go ahead and uh, use a uh, full mesh architecture, you can bypass the configuration, or you can bypass the connection between your spokes because there's a direct connection. And yeah, that's uh, from, the, from the configuration perspective, it could be a little bit different when you use um, a full mesh environment. Yeah, so yeah. I always recommend use a hub and spoke and when you have everything in place and you know, okay, exactly this vignettes should be connected directly because of latency or of uh, uh, of hub or uh, hop uh, from the hop perspective, you can use in this case a mesh environment, but always start or always recommend to use an uh, hub and spoke architecture. Great, thank you. And, and yeah, you mentioned about one of the important parts when it comes to the cloud adoption framework and that design based on landing zones, different environment and so on. So hub and sports, it's 
actually the best design. So you can make sure about uh, reliability, security, and performance in your environment. But yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it's It was a really good answer. So Hamid, do you have any questions? Uh, no, not from my side. Yeah. I think it was so clear, actually. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing more is when, when, when we talk about um, the architecture, is it a regional or is it a global architecture? When it comes to a global architecture, you have maybe more regions than one. I uh, always recommend to use uh, Azure Virtual One because it's really, really easy. It's really easy to handle. It's also a centralized uh, management, centralized uh, environment. So, yeah. That's also really interesting, virtual one. So maybe one session in the future. At <laughs> yeah, why not? I think of course we, we would love to. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a kind of enterprise solution. Yes. I would say it's it's an in enterprise solution and it's very useful. Uh, I've had several uh, projects based on that and it's so cool. So why not? Of course. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. If there are no any other questions from attendees. Yeah, seems like there is no any other question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Hannes. And thank you, everyone. Join us to this session. And yeah, Hamid. Yeah, thanks very much, Hannes, for the time and uh, the information you shared, the experience you shared with us. Wish you a great evening. Take thank care, you. everyone. Bye. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.